Okay, so we've gone through and looked at the ways which we can reference orientation wise what's going on, but now let's take a look at how we can localize distinct areas of the body. And we'll start with the cavities of the body. In the cavities of the body, what we can do is we can look at it in terms of the dorsal side. In the dorsal side, we have the dorsal cavity made up of the cranial cavity and the vertebral canal or vertebral cavity. And then we have the ventral cavity. The ventral cavity is broken up into two parts by the diaphragm into the abdominal pelvic cavity and into the thoracic cavity. The abdominal pelvic cavity is broken up even further into the abdominal cavity and into the pelvic cavity. And all of these cavities will be used for referencing for where we see distinct organs. The thoracic cavity is also broken up into distinct cavities as well, in which we will have the mediastinal region where the heart is gonna be, and then the pleural regions where the lungs are gonna be. Now, as we go into the abdominal pelvic region, we end up having what are referred to as the quadrants and the regions. The quadrants are really easy because you basically just divide the abdominal cavity in half along the y axis and divide it in half across the x axis at the umbilicus. And you simply have an upper quadrant and a lower quadrant. You have a right upper quadrant and a left upper quadrant, a right lower quadrant and a left lower quadrant. Now, what we have to remember here is that it's going to be anatomical mirroring. And so what is right and left on the image is not going to be your right and your left. It's going to be the image is right and the image is left. And so when we go in further into this, let's start looking at the actual regions or quadrants within the abdominal pelvic region. And so we start with the upper and we, we get to the right and left. We get what's referred to as the hypochondric regions. The hypochondric regions are the regions in the superior, superior part of the abdominal pelvic cavity that is still covered by the costals, by the bones of the uh, thoracic cage, or what people refer to as their quote unquote ribs. In between those two areas, we have what's referred to as the epigastric region. If we go just below these regions, we get to the umbilical region, which is basically where your belly button should be. And then to either side, we get the right and to the left lumbar regions. Now, if we go even further below this, we go more inferior, we get to the hypogastric region. And then we get to the iliac or the inguinal regions. And we get the right and the left iliac or the right and the left inguinal regions. So why would we want to utilize these quadrants and these regions? Well, the reason for them is so that we're able to identify possible organs that might be impacted simply by knowing what area of the abdomen we might happen to have issues with. So if you look at the image here, can you think about which region we might have issues if we happen to have, say, uh, appendicitis? Or what region might be affected if we happen to happen to have a uh, urinary bladder infection? Or if we happen to have gallbladder pains? What the regions do is it provides a localization without having to go in and surgically examine or scan the patient, either through a CT scan or through an MRI scan, for distinct anatomical issues stemming from pains within these areas but it also gives us a point of reference if we choose to go ahead and scan these areas. So the last thing we have to look at is probably the hardest part of all of the anatomical terms, and that is what do all of the various body parts actually mean? Now, in the online uh, lesson, you'll notice that there is a bonus assignment, and the bonus assignment here is to go ahead and translate with someone else in the class, the wonderful kid song that we use to teach body parts, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through what those head, shoulders, knees, and toes might mean in anatomical terminology. Now what to remember is that we're gonna use anatomical terms here, but we also have to know what do they mean when, we're when we reference them as we talk to our patients. And so let's start with cephalic or head. After cephalic and head, we get to the areas of the face where we will have the ocular, 
the nasal, the oral, the buccal, and the mental. We then get to the neck, and that's the cervical. And so as we're going through these, start pointing to the stuff as we go along. So you actually have a point of reference for what's going on here. We then get to <clears throat> what some people would call their arm, but it's not really their arm. It's their upper extremity. Their upper extremity starts with the junction to the torso in the axilla or axillary region. Lateral to the axillary region, we get the deltoid, just superior to the deltoid. There's a little bony spot on your shoulder. And that little bony spot is the acromial area. As we go inferior down the upper extremity, we get to the brachial. Then we get to <coughs> then we get to the antecubital region. And so think about why the antecubital region might be important for a healthcare professional. This is where we're going to find the vein, the antecubital vein, that we use to draw blood. We then get to the antebrachial or the antebrachium. We then get to the carpals. We then get to the mons or the hand and the palmar side or the side where the palm is. And then we get to the digital areas or your fingers. Now let's work back into the torso and we get to the thoracic area. The thoracic area is broken up into three parts. The sternal area or your sternum where most people will call their quote unquote breastbone. Just lateral and surrounding the sternum is the pectoral region. Where the mammary gland happens to be is the mammary area. It's the area that is directly surrounding the nipple and the areola. It is not the entirety of the chest. The chest is pectoral. Mammary is just where the mammary glands happen to be. We then get to the abdominal region. And then central in the abdominal region, we have the umbilicus. As we work further down into the pelvic region of the abdominal pelvic cavity, we get the pelvis or the pelvic. At the junction between the pelvis and what would be we'll call the lower extremities, we get the inguinal region. And then the area of the genitalia will be the pubic region. We then get to the lower extremities. The lower extremity is going to junction to the torso at the coxal or the hip. We then get to the thigh or the femoral area. We then get to the knee and the kneecap particular, which we refer to as the patella or the patellar area. We then get down into the leg and we finally get into the crural. The crural is going to meet up with the ankle or the tarsals to form the ankle. And then we get to the foot or the pes sometimes referred to as the PED, P-E-D. And then finally, we get to the dorsum of the foot. And then once again, we're gonna have digitals or digits, and these are going to be the toes. So let's flip it around and let's take a look at some of the same landmarks, but from the posterior side now. Now, on the anterior side, we gotta worry about mirroring. On the posterior side, there is no mirroring. On the posterior side, the image is right is my right, and the image is left is my left. And so we start with, at the top, the cranium. The back of the head is the occipital. The ear is the auricle. We then have the thorax. And in particular, that area of the thorax is the scapular region of the thorax. Central to the scapular region of the thorax, we get the vertebral area of the thorax. 
just below the thorax, we get to the abdominal again. Central in the abdominal, most medial in the abdominal, we get to the lumbar. Distal to the lumbar, we get the sacral. Once again, working down the upper extremity, working from most proximal to most distal, we get the deltoid and then the brachial. And then we get what's referred to as the olecranon. The olecranon is that bony spot on your elbow. We then get to the antebrachial or the antebrachium again. We will then get to the mons or manus. And then just like we have with the foot, we have a dorsal side of the hand or the dorsum. So let's go back and look at the lower extremity now. And we'll start with the junction on the posterior side at the gluteal or the batoc region. And then we get the perineal or the anal region. Once again, we're gonna have the femoral side. We're on the knee again, but just like with the elbow, we have different terms here. And so the anterior side of the knee is the patellar. The posterior side of the knee is the popliteal. Now, once again, we're gonna have a different name here for the leg. And this time we have the surrol, S-U. And this is your calf region. We then get to the tarsals and then to the calcaneal and then to the plantar surface of the foot.